Jean Piaget was a renowned psychologist of the 20th century and a pioneer in developmental child psychology. Piaget did not accept the prevailing theory that knowledge was innate. Instead, he believed a child's knowledge and understanding of the world developed over time through the child's interaction with the world. By observing that interaction, Piaget was able to perceive how children created schemas that shaped their perceptions, cognitions, and judgment of the world. Just as almost all children learn to roll over before they learn to sit up by themselves, Piaget believed that children gain their cognitive ability in a developmental order. These insights, that children at different ages think in fundamentally different ways, led to Piaget's stage theory of cognitive development. Piaget's stage theory is one of the most enduring theories in psychology. Over his lifetime, Piaget contributed significantly to the study of cognitive development in children. However, he is best known for his stages of cognitive development. Piaget classified children's cognitive development into four sequential periods. The sensory motor period from birth to 24 months, the pre-operations period, between the approximate ages of two and seven years old, the concrete operations period that begins around age seven and continues through about 11 years old, and the formal operations period that begins around age 11 and continues through adolescence. Piaget's most important contribution to understanding cognitive development and the fundamental aspect of his theory was the idea that development occurs in unique and distinct stages with each stage occurring at a specific time, in a sequential manner, and in a way that allows the child to think about the world using new capacities. As this text is about infants and toddlers, we will primarily focus on the first stage, the sensory motor stage, which includes children between the ages of zero to two years. During the sensory motor stage, children use their senses and motor capabilities to understand the world. In fact, Infants' use of their senses to perceive the world is so central to their understanding that whenever infants do not directly perceive objects, as far as they are concerned, the objects do not exist. Piaget found, for instance, that if he first interested infants in a toy and then covered the toy with a blanket, infants who were younger than six months of age would act as if the toy had disappeared completely. They never tried to find it under the blanket, but would nevertheless smile and reach for it when the blanket was removed. Piaget found that it was not until about eight months that the infants realized the object was merely covered and not gone. Piaget used the term object permanence to refer to the child's ability to know that an object exists even when the object cannot be perceived. The sensory motor period begins at birth and continues through the child's first two years. It focuses on the development of schemata through perceptions and bodily movements. There are six substages within the sensory motor period. Stage one, which lasts from birth until around one month of age, includes inborn motor and sensory reflexes, like the sucking and palmer reflexes. An object comes into contact with an infant's cheek and is automatically sucked on and licked. At this stage, Piaget proposed that learning about the world is not primarily voluntary. Instead, infants begin to encounter the world as a result of their inborn reflexes. Stage two, which occurs approximately between one and four months, observes the primary circular reaction in which an infant happens to experience an event and then attempts to repeat the action. The infant begins to discriminate between objects and adjust responses accordingly as reflexes are replaced with voluntary movements. An infant may accidentally engage in a behavior and find it interesting, such as making a vocalization. This interest motivates trying to do it again and helps the infant learn a new behavior that originally occurred by chance. At first, most actions have to do with the body, but in months to come, will be directed more toward objects. Stage three, which takes place between four to eight months, is a secondary circular reaction when an infant repeats an action with a specific desired consequence or to achieve an unrelated consequence. The infant becomes more and more actively engaged in the outside world and takes delight in being able to make things purposefully happen on their own. Repeated motion brings particular interest, 
For example, as the infant is able to bang two lids together from the cupboard when seated on the kitchen floor. Stage 4, which occurs approximately between 8 and 12 months, comprises the use of familiar means to obtain ends. It entails deliberate planning of steps to meet a goal or objective. The infant can engage in behaviors that others perform and anticipate upcoming events. Perhaps because of continued maturation of the prefrontal cortex, the infant becomes capable of having a thought and carrying out a planned, goal-directed activity such as seeking a toy that has rolled under the couch. The object continues to exist in the infant's mind even when out of sight, and the infant now is capable of making attempts to retrieve it. Stage 5, which takes place between 12 to 18 months of age, is a tertiary circular reaction in which an infant experiments with the environment using the properties of one object to manipulate another object. In other words, using an experimental object like a stick to push a ball that then makes a noise. The infant more actively engages in experimentation to learn about the physical world. Gravity is learned by pouring water from a cup or pushing bowls from high chairs. The caregiver tries to help the child by picking it up again and placing it on the tray. And what happens? Another experiment. The child pushes it off the tray again, causing it to fall and the caregiver to pick it up again. Stage six, which occurs approximately between 18 and 24 months, is characterized by insight, wherein the child observes other people manipulate the environment to reach the desired goal, then the child applies that knowledge to obtain the desired goal. The child is now able to solve problems using mental strategies, to remember something heard days before and repeat it, to engage in pretend play and to find objects that have been moved even out of sight. Take for instance, a toddler who is upstairs in a room with the door closed, supposedly taking a nap. The doorknob has a safety device on it that makes it impossible for the child to turn the knob. After trying several times in vain to push the door or turn the knob, the child carries out a mental strategy learned from prior experience to get the door opened. She knocks on the door. The child is now better equipped with mental strategies for problem solving. The culmination of stage six and the sensory motor period is the child's understanding of object permanence and the ability to abstract that objects have an existence independent of the child's interaction with them. Classic examples of understanding object permanence include a child's realization that when a parent leaves, the parent continues to exist, or the child's attempt to recover a hidden toy, indicating the child's understanding that the toy still exists outside of view. While learning about the sensory motor stage, did you notice how Piaget used observable behaviors from children to understand and categorize cognitive progression? Children reveal their cognitive abilities through their observable behaviors. The key here is that we, as teachers and caregivers, need to take the time to carefully observe and document children's behaviors. The sensory motor substages can act like a map to help us understand a child's current cognitive stage and also the next stages they will progress into. Knowing which substage children are in can inform us about the function of their behaviors and provide us insight into possible activities to match their cognitive progression. For example, in stage three, infants take delight in being able to make things purposefully happen on their own. Therefore, caregivers should consider including play objects that infants can easily manipulate and that have a consequence, an outcome that can be experienced by the child. In comparison, during stage five, an infant directly experiments with their environment. Therefore, caregivers should consider including various play objects that could be used to engage with the immediate contextual environment. As contexts change, such as inside-outside, water play, table activities, etc., so too should the experimental play objects to best encourage experimental curiosity. Observe the children and how they use experimental play tools, and then reflect on their behaviors to consider additional or alternative objects to support their experimentation. Infant and toddler teachers and caregivers can use Piaget's sensory motor substages to understand children's cognitive abilities revealed through their behaviors and consider the best ways to support and encourage further engagement and exploration 
based on Piaget's description of the cognitive function for each substage. 